In this video, I talk about how I was able to structure my revision and use my time effectively to study for a postgraduate medical exam while working full time as a doctor. It's quite a long video because I wanted to share everything that I could, so feel free to jump to different sections that you might find more useful. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Matt. I'm a junior doctor working in London. As some of you guys may know, I recently took a postgraduate medical exam, the MRCP Part 1, which is a specialty exam for those wanting to pursue further training in medicine. This is an exam with a lot of content, and I mean a lot. Think medical school on steroids, remembering random chromosomes or random genes for certain mutations and diseases. And it's an exam with an incredibly wide scope, and people end up studying months for it. I prepared for this exam while I was working full time on the intensive care unit. We were working 12 hour shifts at the time and working every other weekend. So I had to plan my study schedule around this which was quite difficult because oftentimes I found I was so exhausted after work and whatnot. In total I probably studied for around three months and averaged around four hours a day of revision. Although this did vary slightly as some days I'd be a bit more tired and work less and other days I'd have the day off and work more. Realistically on a day with a 12 hour shift I'd only really have six hours of free time. As of the 24 days, 12 hours for work, I'd sleep about six hours, leaving six hours to account for my total four hours of revision. On my days off, this extended to about six hours and near to the time of the exam, for example, in the last couple of weeks, I found myself studying up to 10 hours a day. It can be difficult to stay productive for such a long period of time. And I have my own tips and tricks on how I can stay motivated. Though I might save that for another video because I could talk about that for quite a while. With such a limited schedule, I had to create a strict structure to make sure that I was squeezing in the hours that I needed to revise, as well as maximizing my productivity and efficiency while I had those limited hours. In retrospect, it was a super tiring, but it was a very fruitful period and I definitely learned a lot about myself and my productivity as well as made changes to the way I work, some of which I've actually implemented to my routine nowadays, which is great. So how did I manage to do it? I wanted to share the key things that I did during this period that helped me work as hard as I did. So the first and most important thing when you're trying to overcome any obstacle is to understand the nature of the task and understand why you want to do it. For me doing this exam, my career was my inspiration for wanting to do well. First and foremost, I wanted to be a better doctor and I felt like taking this exam at this stage in my career would give me the knowledge to be able to treat patients better. Progression wise, I had to take this exam to become a medical specialty doctor, so it made sense to get it out of the way as well. There was also a large element of fear which probably played a larger role than it should have for me. I knew if I failed it, my pride would take a hit. I've never failed an exam since uni and I didn't really want to fail one now. The cost implications, we had to pay £420 out of our own pocket and failing the exam would have meant that I'd have to pay it again. And just the fear of having to study another three to four months just for the exam, working three to four hours a day dedicated. While you're working, it just seems like so much work and I would rather be spending my time doing other things like making YouTube videos or working on my other hobbies. Understanding what's ahead mentally is such an important thing in such a large task because you need to be able to break it up into smaller chunks. And also for planning when you're approaching something like an exam, how you're best going to study for it, and how you're best going to use your time. I kept my reasons close to my heart and it definitely helped me through a ton of slumps. I remember there were times when I was so close to burning out or I was so close to giving up just because I'd had enough and I was exhausted. Truthfully and especially at the beginning, I was so overwhelmed with everything that I had to do. But every time I felt like that, I would take a step back, take a deep breath, review the reasons and thoughts and the progress, believe in the journey and restart again with a clearer head. For some people, it might actually be easier or more tangible to write your reasons down or brainstorm it on a piece of paper or on a tablet. And your reasons can vary from anything like wanting to get your dream job to getting a ranking that you're happy with. When you find yourself in doubt or overwhelmed, just take a step back and review those reasons. And this will help you through the hardest and most stressful times and propel you to excel. The next thing I want to mention, which is probably equally as important as the first thing, is that rigorous planning is essential. And I don't just mean planning in the sense like making a to-do list or maybe making a list that you do some days and you don't do other days. I mean really planning your revision schedule and figuring things out day by day and making sure you stick to them. I started planning my revision a whole month before I started properly revising. This included doing the research on my exam, the format of the exam, the revision materials I was going to use, calculating on average how much time I would need to revise, how I was going to distribute that throughout my schedule, taking into account my work schedule and assessing my time frame for this revision period. 
Initially, I would just allocate specialties to a certain week and I would just be doing the question banks or looking through textbooks or doing some reading up. Close to the day, I allocated more specific subjects to periods of times that I wanted to revise further on and my schedules in general were a bit more strict. By doing this, I made sure that I covered and recovered topics. I was familiar with the content that might be examined and I directed the flow of my learning from exposure to learning, to revision, to repetition, to recall. I made sure to set myself daily and weekly goals of topics I would recover or or the questions that I would do and if I didn't meet them I would work twice as hard the next day to make sure I caught up. Personally I found that a structured day worked well for me and it gave me a sense of routine. During my days with my 12 hour shifts that would normally be from 8am to 8pm I would wake up around 4.30 to 5 o'clock, work for about two hours before going to work and when I came back from work squeeze in another two hours of work in the evening. I always seemed to feel sharper and fresher in the morning and that's when I had most of the exposure to new content and learning and in the evenings when I was a bit tired from work it would mostly be revision and re Call, such as doing flashcards, which I would say is less intensive in the learning sense, but still good enough to help with the reiteration and really squeezing that stuff into my head. I genuinely think that for such a massive task like revising for an exam that takes several months, it's really, really important to have proper planning and create the most effective learning strategy for yourself and the best flow of material. But equally, it's really important to be realistic with yourself. You can't plan seven hours a day if you know that you're not going to achieve that seven hours. Be sensible, but be ambitious in a way that motivates you to push yourself a little harder each time. The next thing after you make your schedule is really committing to it because if you are going to properly revise for this exam, you need to make sure that you're sticking to your plan. I'm talking about consistency, really holding yourself accountable for the number of hours that you allocate to study, putting aside the hours in your free time for this and being prepared to sacrifice the time that you would rather be doing other things like watching Netflix or seeing your friends for the tasks that you have planned. Because honestly, studying for an exam or any big achievement for that matter is a grind and that's the hardest thing. You have to be prepared for it to suck but you have to commit to the process. One of the hardest things to do in this period is to be consistent with your exam revision which means that even if you're feeling down or you're feeling sad or you've had a bad day you need to try and pop yourself up so you can do the work that you've allocated. Consistency is one of the main keys to a good exam revision schedule. If you say you're going to wake up at 6am to revise then you must wake up at 6am. It might feel like it's okay that one morning for you to sleep in because, oh, you know, I'll work harder tomorrow, but every small battle counts. Moving on, I know this point is not going to be for everyone and frankly speaking, I didn't think it was going to be for me, but it is one of the changes I made to my schedule that really just opened up so much free time for me. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my sleep. I love sleeping in weekends. I can sleep for hours, but genuinely going from seven hours of sleep on a normal basis to six hours and conditioning myself to do this comfortably frees up a single hour a day, which adds up to 31 hours a month. And trust me, I really needed that hour for my revision. I did this through slowly weaning down the amount of sleep every night. And I'm not saying that you need to flip your whole sleep cycle upside down or try and have unrealistic expectations of functioning with three to four hours of sleep. All I'm saying is that if your time is limited, any amount of time you can spare or get in extra for your revision is so valuable. This was just one of those things that works for me, sleeping six hours and patching up with coffee during the day which was enough to help me survive to get through. And I guess it just opened up a lot of time for me so I wanted to share with you guys as well. The next point I wanted to make is that looking after yourself is so important and I mean that in two senses, reactively and proactively. I remember that I had days when I came back from work and I was exhausted, we'd seen some really sick patients and I was mentally and emotionally fatigued and honestly the last thing that I would have wanted to do was work. It's perfectly normal to have a bad day and I know I said that consistency is key but it's completely okay to take a day off for revision if you're looking after yourself because your well-being and your mental health come first above any exam revision or anything you could be working for. Everyone needs a me day. If you're having a bad day, take the time off and take care of yourself. Do something fun, treat yourself to a nice meal. Equally as important is taking care of yourself proactively and this is especially important when you're going through periods of stress or fatigue or exhaustion. And that means understanding what makes you function as a person, what your baseline mental health and mood is, and making sure you're doing things to look after yourself on a daily basis that keeps you happy and keeps you functioning. For me, this meant just doing things like going to the gym, treating myself to nice meals during dinner time because I love food and nothing makes me happier than a good Chinese meal when I would be able to call my family or go out for a film with some friends or have for dinner. And finally, take one step at a time. 
I found myself at the beginning looking down a 3,000 question question bank, a whole book for revision, and over 10 specialties within medicine that I knew almost nothing about. At times, just the sheer thought of how I would need to spend the next few months cooped up in my room was enough to make me cry and emotional and overwhelmed. It seemed crazy to me at the time and so insurmountable. I mean, how was I expected to fit all that knowledge into my head? But honestly, the best thing you can do is just take things slowly, one step at a time. Fit each piece of the puzzle individually because each topic is big enough to revise for as it is. The way I went around this is I set myself smaller learning objectives on a daily and weekly and monthly basis that I would try and achieve. I worked consistently and after a few weeks I found that the pieces of my puzzle were coming together quite nicely. The best piece of advice that I can offer for people in this situation is just do not panic. I did and I almost freaked out. Take one step at a time and things will slot in place. And also at the end believe in yourself because you've worked hard, you've put in the hours and also if you don't believe in yourself who will? I mean maybe me if you watch this and take away something from this video but you know believe in yourself. And guys, that just about sums it up. I hope you found this useful. My exam revision was definitely one of the most stressful ones today and super challenging. But I enjoyed the process and I feel like I learned a lot about myself and about medicine. I actually found that I was pushing myself to different limits in the intellectual, physical and mental processes, not to mention my amount of sleep. And this was quite an enlightening experience for me, but again, everyone has their own process. If you found this video interesting, I'd really appreciate if you could click the like button and share it with some friends or colleagues. I'm trying to reach as many people as I can, just because I know how lost I feel at the beginning of every process I go through. So I want to be able to impart the knowledge that I've learned to as many people as I can. You can follow my journey by subscribing down below or I think to the right on the watermark. For now, that is it. And I will see you guys in the next video.